everyone, welcome back to Nintendo Prime. I apologize, I have a bit of a raspy voice today, but we have some big news to get to, and before we do that, yes, we're giving away three copies of Metroid Dread. Uh, you gotta be subscribed to enter, but hey, we have a link down in the description or pinned comment to Viral Sweep. Go ahead and enter there to win a couple copies. The third copy will be given away on a live stream later this month. Uh, before we get into the rest of this video, I do want to make an announcement. Uh, this upcoming Saturday, we are doing a fan meetup. We are doing this meetup at a local pub in my town. So, yes, folks, you do need to be 21 or older to enter. This is taking place in Chippewa Falls, Wisconsin. I understand that everyone can make that sort of trip. If you want additional details, there will be a link down in the description and the pinned comment to a Facebook group uh, where you can join and let us know if you're going to be there. We would actually like to get a decent headcount on who's going to be there in case we're going to give away some free merch or other stuff while you guys attend. Also, it's a chance for you to meet myself, Eric from the Nintendo Prime Podcast, and yes, even my fiance that you guys see on the live streams. Um, it's going to be a good time. We have uh, karaoke happening that night. We got, you know, obviously a DJ do some dancing. We can play pool. We could shoot darts. We can obviously all bring our switches and have some fun. Have a few drinks. Have a few laughs. Have a good time. So uh, hopefully I see a bunch of you guys there, and let's get into today's video. So our first story actually deals a little bit with Metroid Dread, but more like the developer behind Metroid Dread and Mercury Steam. Uh, we previously reported that there have been some a um, little bit of backlash by former employees over not being credited. Uh, in the game and we found out that this is actually quite normal uh, to not be credited in games across the whole gaming industry which I guess I get some of the arguments to not do it I also think sometimes certain positions aren't needed for the whole of development so I don't know it, it, it's a rather sticky situation and when you're dealing with complaints from former employees um, yeah it's it's never gonna sound good former employees that quit for various reasons usually don't have nice things to say. And that continues as um, Annette Games published a follow-up to that article. Uh, they're the ones that originally posted it. And basically the former employees are making even worse accusations beyond not being credited. Um, the studio, uh, the, the, they mentioned that Mercury Steam actually overscoped what Metroid Dread was supposed to be, causing Nintendo to suggest making cuts to cutscenes and all that. There originally was going to be 120 cutscenes and double the amount of bosses that are currently in the game. And Nintendo basically told Mercury Steam, you're overshooting the budget slash expectations for what Metroid Dread is supposed to be. Some people might be disappointed by that, but uh, that's what Nintendo did, which obviously caused Mercury Steam to have to cut a lot of people from the team. And maybe this is where some of the animosity is coming from. Nintendo played a role in it, but Mercury Steam obviously overshot what they were supposed to be doing. Um, moving on, it says, Development of Metroid Dread is described as quite chaotic, many times giving me directions. My lead and the game director contradicted each other, says another programmer. Another artist had this to say of innate to the management style in place at the studio. They do not trust the worker at all, and it shows. You don't feel valued. The bad atmosphere is constant and it's very tense in general. Punishments at the studio are alleged to range from isolating the worker or changing the group to the same sudden dismissal. Elsewhere, allegations are made of improper treatment of staff and contractors regarding salary negotiation, as well as a negative assessment of the studio's response to the pandemic. One programmer said that the pandemic has not been well managed and it was total and utter chaos and describes unsafe anti-COVID measures employed in the workplace as staff were unable to work on the project remotely. Inconsistencies in the Human Resources Department, responses to employee grievances are cited, with one example detailing the workers' right to leave the office to cast a vote for the Madrid community elections, which fell on a working day, questioned due to the current state of development at that time. The article also touches on the credits debate with a fear of speaking out in public suggested as a factor as what has kept people silent until now. I think they play a bit with the fact that a lot of people don't dare to speak in public. I know two more people who are not properly credited, but I understand why they are afraid to complain because it seems they are going to sink your career. 
another worker elaborates. The main leaders know a lot of people and they can destroy your career if they have a problem with you. They don't mind talking bad about you and screwing up your career and that's why people don't talk. <sighs> so, these are obviously some fairly serious um, allegations thrown at Mercury Steam. Um, it's hard to know where to stand on this personally. Obviously, when you're a former employee, you're probably going to be pretty disgruntled because maybe you didn't want to leave or you were fired for reasons you don't think were just. And some of these allegations do sound quite serious in that Mercury Steam may not be treating their employees the best. But I can say from firsthand experience working at even someplace like McDonald's, there's people that get fired and start bad talking uh, McDonald's like there's some evil corporation that has it out for them and didn't understand that their mom has cancer and all this other shit when reality is they were late to their shift for 10 consecutive days, uh, didn't bother to show up on the day they were fired, or while they were there, they didn't follow all the protocols and started having a lot of their food sent back. Like, there's sometimes in cases like this, and I don't know this 100%, Former employees that have been let go aren't as willing to accept the mistakes they may be made that led to their dismissal in the first place and like to place blame on other factors that they just sort of make up in their head. Now, again, this is why I don't know what to think about this. I didn't talk to these employees myself or former employees. I don't really know. Mercury Steam might just be a really crappy place to work. I can't vouch one way or another because we're only hearing from disgruntled former employees, nothing seems to be coming from current employees, even anonymously. So I kind of feel like if it was that bad, pe current people working there would say something anonymous anonymously about it. We've seen Jason Schreier get people to talk about crunch anonymously. I would assume they could get somebody to corroborate this. Unfortunately, it's just a bunch of disgruntled former employees. And so that just kind of leaves me questioning. I'm not sure what to think. It sounds really, really bad, but sometimes it always sounds worse than what the reality of the situation actually was. So all I know is the end result, Metroid Dread, this might be game of the year, baby. So, uh, hey, at least we got something positive out of this whole mess. This next story is more of a non-story, but I wanted to address it because, gosh, I'm seeing this stuff spread like crazy on YouTube and news websites. I don't get it. So Zippo. He is a person who was purported to be a leaker. He has a blog uh, and he put out the rumors that the Pokemon company has a next gen switch. He knows of at least one company with a next gen switch dev unit. And that is the Pokemon company. And yeah, a gen, you know, the next generation of Pokemon is going to be launching on this new gen system and blah, 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 blah. Look, Zippo is about as trustworthy as trying to grab construction paper to wipe my ass. It ain't gonna turn out very well. Bottom line is Zippo is not a leaker. I think we have already debunked and proven the debunks of him over time at this point. Yeah, he got a couple things right about the Sonic anniversary. He also got like 75% of what he said wrong. So why are we continuing to give this person credit? He was wrong about quite literally everything he said was gonna happen at E3. He's been wrong about everything he said except for like one thing about the Sonic anniversary. The woo, we got one lucky guess out of the last 248 things that he has said were going to happen. Guys, Zippo is a fraud. Can we just, the, like people want to debate about Samus Hunter and all, at least she has a lot of things that come true. Zippo doesn't even have that. Zippo has nothing. So. Anytime you see a video pop up that talks about, oh yeah, according to uh, insider Zippo, he's not an insider. He's been banned at all the places that he pretended to be an insider for not being one, okay? Don't believe it. Don't get your hopes up. This doesn't, by the way, mean, by the way, if a next gen Switch dev unit did exist, of course the damn Pokemon company has it. They work for Nintendo, but, and why would Zippo know about what's happening at a Japanese development studio? Like, yes. If a next gen Switch dev unit does exist, I'm sure the Pokemon company does have one. Cause they work for Nintendo. This is stupid. It's a non-story. Zippo's a liar. Just move on already. Speaking of moving on, we actually have a smidge of a possible leak from at least somebody who has a track record more recently of getting things right. 
named Centro Leaks. You guys probably know them from Twitter. They don't have everything they say doesn't end up coming true, but we have way better track record than someone like Zippo. So it's definitely worth at least paying some attention to. I'd say it's about a 50-50 track record with this person. Uh, and they're actually claiming that Generation 9 Pokemon is going to launch next year. Now, that might seem like, you know, controversial, I suppose, because obviously we have uh, Pokemon Legends Arceus that they've supposedly been working on this whole time. How can they suddenly have a whole, another gener a whole new generation of Pokemon game ready to come next year? Well, technically, if they do release one next year, holiday, 2022 holiday, that does fit the normal schedule of a new generation roughly every three years. So that actually would fall in line with the way the Pokemon company has traditionally done things. But some people felt like they were not going to go on the traditional pattern because after all, they broke from tradition to have a third party company do Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl because they wanted to do this experimental game in Pokemon Legends Arceus. So if they're breaking from tradition there, we're probably gonna have to wait an extra year to see Generation 9, right? Apparently not. Apparently Generation 9 is still planning to launch next year, which by the way, starting with Arceus, ending with Gen 9, that would be an insane thing. So we'll have to wait and see if this ends up coming true. Uh, but we shouldn't have to wait long. We typically would hear about Generation 9 pretty early into 2022, at least within the first six months, if it is going to come next year. So, uh, yeah, um, for now, we're just only going to hear about the upcoming games. But, yeah, you know, we'll see. We'll see. I, I'm not, I can't rule it out as a possibility. There obviously is multiple development groups at Game Freak. So it is what it is. And our last story deals with the NPD. That's right. We finally have the NPD in for last month. These are sales here in North America. And well, the streak is over, folks. Um, there has been an ongoing sales streak for Nintendo Switch uh, that shattered previous records. Previous records were like 12 months um, where one platform leads in unit sales every single month. Yeah, that was the original record. Nintendo Switch has been doing it for 33 straight months at number one in unit sales in the MPD until now. In wake of the announcement of Switch OLED and obviously in wake of the incredible demand for a system like PlayStation 5, Switch has fallen to number two. PlayStation 5 now leads in unit sales and dollar sales. They've actually done dollar sales for a bit, um, knocking Switch off its roost at 33 straight months, which is still incredible. That's over three years. That's almost three and a half years, if we're completely honest. That is a long, time for one platform to be the dominant one in the sales chart so it's an incredible end we're not sure if that record will ever be broken again and by the way just because playstation 5 won it last month doesn't mean that nintendo won't take it back in october won't take it back in november and december and then we'll see moving forward from there because 2022 everyone's got big games coming out and you might say, well, why would they take it back? Well, because Switch OLED's finally out. And there is a thought process that Switch OLED led to less sales last month because people knew this new system was coming. So they were holding out for the new one. So we'll have to wait and see what happens. Obviously, Nintendo has a number of big holiday titles coming still. Mario Party being a big one. Shin Megami Tensei 5. Obviously, Pokemon Legends Arceus landing in January. We obviously have um, that Brain game in uh, December and also Advance Wars 1 Plus 2 Reboot. Obviously, we know about you know, Splatoon 3 and other massive titles, Sparks of Hope, coming next year. So Nintendo has a path to maintain amazing sales in the next year. And maybe this was just a blip due to a new system release. I don't know. But hey, kudos to Nintendo. Um, it was a fun run. And we do have a, a little other update from uh, the MPD. Because we're not going to go over most of the sales. Because they pertain to games either that aren't on Switch or pertain to... Um, just the general sales of the other platforms, which are doing really, really well, as expected. Um, it says WarioWare Get It Together. That was a game that launched last month. Uh, was the 15th best-selling game of the month and the second best-selling on Switch. Now, that might not seem like that great. You would hope a new game coming out could hit number one. Here's the thing. It's actually the best launch for a WarioWare game since 2007. So it might not end up becoming the best selling WarioWare game. Maybe the, you know, that one back in 2007 might end up being better selling in the end, but to be above everything since, and there's been a number of WarioWare games since 2007, that's still pretty good for, you know, a spin-off IP such as WarioWare. So that is good news for that franchise. All right, folks, I am Nathaniel Robojance from Nintendo Prime. 
Hopefully you enjoyed this video, enjoyed the news. We caught our wind as we kept going. Everything's feeling good. My throat's already feeling better by the end of this video. Yes, baby. Nintendo Prime is back. Oh, I never really left. What am I back from? I didn't take a vacation. I, mean, I never left. Whatever. Hopefully I'll see some of you guys in person next week, Saturday. I'm really looking forward to that meetup. And I'll catch you guys in the next video.